Welcome back to season two of Cup Fuss and Explore with Mo. This season is gonna be very exciting. It's gonna be something that's gonna blow your mind. We're gonna sit down with all kinds of people, people with a different heritage, heritage different uh, identities, different uh, colors, you know. We wanna to get to know and explore more the depth of our people that's out there. Today, we're sitting with a beautiful person that I've met on social media, and I'm very, very honored to have her here today. And her name is Maxine. Hello, Maxine, how are you doing? Hi, I'm good and yourself. I'm very, very, very well, man. Tell me, first of all, what did you think when I actually, you know, DM'd you, or well, I'll contact you on, on social media <laughs> to actually just to want to know if you would be keen to come down and sit down and talk to me about who you are? Well, it was very random. Yeah. I was like, do you know that I'm transgender? Do yeah. You know, do you know me? Like, yeah. I, I felt like you didn't know me, and it's just like you thought I was someone else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but it was it was good. Like I was I was very happy to yeah. know that you acknowledged me yeah. and you asked me that. Was yeah. Nice. No. It, uh, I think your your page came up or some a picture came up on a, on my explore uh, page, and, and I checked it out. And I know for some time now I wanted to have a conversation with a transgender. Okay. Because my fascination started uh, where, um, some years ago when I saw them in in in, in Thailand, mm. but also the thought of meeting a transgender to, to speak to them because I know it's also very sensitive for some people mm. it's very sensitive for them to talk about it mm. because they don't want to expose that side of them well I wouldn't say expose but it's hard for them to talk about it because it's very personal yeah so I was very taken uh, taken away when you said but you know you are actually keen so thank you very much for that <laughs> nice. it also says a lot about your personality and that you actually have made a peace with the fact that you are transgender because you say it so freely. And mm -hmm. please, I want to say to you that I'm, whatever I'm going to say today is I'm saying with all respect. Mm -hmm. and, and, I, and I'm sure you know that. That's why you agreed to come on the show. No, definitely. So tell me a bit more about who you are, man. Isn't to where you come from, you know, where you were born. And actually, the most important thing is actually, um, when did you know that you were meant to be a woman? At what age was that? Well, I was born and raised in Bala. No uh, way. Yes. In really? Bala. Yeah. Where in Bala? In Old Bala, Chestnut Way. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> so born and raised, um, went to Bala High. Um, I've always known that I was a gay boy. Yeah. Um, since primary school, always you just the morphe, the gay boy. Yeah. Um, when I hit high school, that's when I knew that this is not just. It's not just that. Like mm. I would venture into the art of drag but yeah. when I would wash everything off and take off the wig and the makeup I just felt empty like I expressed myself way more as a girl than as a guy yeah. and that to me told me that maybe you're not meant to be a boy mm -hmm. maybe you're meant to be a girl yeah. and I took it upon myself to do my research better educate myself and that's when I started doing hormone therapy and more or less what age was that I was about 17 17 yeah and before that, all those years, you you were in a in a phase of what you mean now being gay. Yeah. All those times, yeah. you thought that you were, and and what kind of if I if I just wanna just for my interest sake, mm -hmm. um, what was the feeling of that? What what actually what kind of feeling was it? If you can maybe still tell me if you still know what it mm -hmm. felt felt like then, what did it feel like that you needed to be gay? You know. Um, it's just a feeling that I and I think some of the viewers also want to understand, especially when it comes from uh, a young age. Mm -hmm. Because normally, uh, from my experience, that I know people discover that only when they like in their teens, like mm -hmm. high school years and all of that, when they see these different kind of um, attraction in other men. Yeah. You know what I mean, in boys. So how did you actually know um, prior 17 years? Look, you live in fear. Mm -hmm. You're constantly living in fear because you're constantly hiding yourself to the world and to yourself. Like, I remember I would have to watch the way I walked in the house because I was afraid of my mom watching me or seeing me walking a certain way and saying something or wearing something that mm. I would really like to wear but I'm not allowed to because that's yeah. not the typical boy thing for you yes, to wear. Yes. Um, it was very scary, honestly. Like, I remember my coming out story was by me wearing a jeans that was a bit too tight and my mom asked me, um, is Jay gay? Mm. And then we both just started crying and that's how I just came out. And then the saddest part to me was her telling me I knew about it because you made me live this whole entire life being so afraid and you could have just told me that I yeah. knew. 
Yeah. You know, it would have made my life so much easier. Oh my word. So that was also basically a confession from a mother's point of view. Yeah. And it's an old saying that say, uh, a mother always know. A mother always knows. They always know. Always. So, I mean, the fact that she cried with you at the time is mm. that she actually, I, fe I think, she felt she did you injustice mm. because she could have helped you to say, but uh, my, my boy, be what you want to be at that mm. age already so you can understand that, okay, I can be whoever yeah. I want to be. Doesn't matter if my mom accepts me for who I am and mm. what I feel and I expose it to my mother because that's a close relationship, yeah. you know, that's not out someone outside. She could have actually be your gateway to a better person from she a young have. age. She not that you are now, mm. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> but you know. Um, I think she held me back because she was afraid. Yeah. Um, and like most mothers, they are afraid, mm. but mm. that's only because they don't understand. Yeah. Um, but now she's my biggest supporter and I better educated her as well. And now she goes to everything, all yeah. my shows, all my events, and she wants to know everything. Yes. Um, so I think that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. She, we can see the jump from where she kept things away from you and the fact that she like admitted, I'm going to accept mm. my son for who he wants to be and yeah. where he wants to go with the journey. And now to today, I mean, today you are transgender, not even gay. Mm. So that, that, that has a, and I must say, I must, I must say this, you know, for, I'm very pleased that you actually mentioned that. And it's also a message to all our mothers out there mm. that not to be scared for our kids, mm. you know, to, to accept them for who they are. If they don't want to play rugby, let them play soccer. You know, it's, that goes for the fathers as well. Mm. And I mean, you just turn the world a better place mm. by starting things and accepting things yeah. and supporting your kids where it starts at home. So I'm very, 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 very pleased that you actually mentioned that and that your mother are still in your life mm. supporting and be there for you. I'm very happy. And your father, how did he accept it and take it on? Weirdly, he was actually more supportive. Really? <laughs> he was the one what? to actually tell me, okay, if you want the doll, it's okay, I'll buy you the doll. It's yeah. okay. And he would like hide things from my mom. Yeah. So um, that was kind of helpful at yeah. the time yeah, because yeah. he would help me explore. And yeah. he would tell me like, look, there's cars, there's dolls. You choose. you choose. Yeah, and that was very, very nice yeah. at the and time. Do, what age are you now, if I may ask? I'm 25. 25. Mm. So your parents is also like sort of, uh, how, what age are they now? Oh, they could be in their 40s. They're in their 40s. They're in their 40s. They're in their 40s. They're in their 40s. So they are from that, they're not from that old generation. No. Because like, like my mother, for instance, like she wouldn't, she doesn't understand any of that stuff. Yeah. So that's, you know, that's, that's amazing, man. And also, I think, it would have been nice if we had your parents' idea now. If I knew that, you know, if I'd done oh. it, just more research on it. I mean, it could have set a good example for the parents out there in today's life. Mm. Like, there's no need to judge our kids. Not, no, no need to judge the people out there who wants to be, uh, who wants to live different. Because this new world has given us so much that we actually know who we are. Mm. But because we have to face the world, mm. we need to pretend. Yeah. And that's normally where the mess up comes in the whole, the, you know, the, the violence and the killing and the rape of our kids and all of that stuff. I think it comes in with all of that stuff, you know, if, if our parents can be supportive and accept and admit that I'm taking my kid as who he is or who she is and support her in whatever he or she wants to be in this world, whatever time of her, of her life. Yeah. Yeah. So I, it's, it's a beautiful thing, man. <laughs> Look, I always say. People hate because they don't understand. And yeah. once they understand, it broadens everything. Yeah, and yeah. it opens their mind to so much more. So it's always best to educate yeah. your parents. Yeah. So there was not a specific event in your life that actually made you realize that you, if I'm talking now back in the day when you thought you were, well, well you know you were gay. Is it not an event that happened? Or is it any specific event that happened? Or did, was it just a feeling that you had that you needed to be gay? Um, it was always a feeling, yeah. like um, a few months ago, I was looking through old pictures of mine and yeah. I was like looking at myself at creation. I'm like, mm mm, Tracer Gertie, that's like, a uh -uh, that's really? clearly not a boy. Oh um, and me not remember, like, I can't remember anything, but mm. me looking at myself, it's like, no, that's clearly not a boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, man, and then and, and tell me, because now I know that you that you did to know that uh, there was no specific event. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, if I need to speak for myself as a, still a guy of today, um, none of that came up in my mind or in, in mm. actually feelings. 
So I would, if you can remember, maybe if you're not, then we move on. But mm -hmm. if you can remember, what was that type of feeling? What was the the need or the the, the feel of satisfaction that you wanted to give yourself? Then instead of being in a body of a male, mm. is that is there any specific uh, feeling that you had at a time? If you can remember, mm -hmm. though. Being gay or being transgender, hmm. you don't wake up one day and it's like, okay, that this is my life. This is what I want to become. Hmm. It's not a job. It's not something you can choose. Yeah. You just have it. You just know inside of you. It's also something that you 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 will just always know. Yeah. Um, a lot of people they say at the age of twenty or fifty, then they are like, oh, I'm gay. Yeah. They come out. They always knew that they were gay. They were just afraid of society yes. or family yeah. or even their marriage. And that made them not want to come out. Mm -hmm. But I honestly believe because with me, I've always knew yeah. that this is who I am and who I'm meant to be. So at 17, you went over to... Um, Being trans. Trans. Yeah. Can you, can, you, can you please explain to us just that, that phase? How, how, what did you... How can I put it in terms of... How did you actually decide, but I want to be transgender? Mm. I want to be in a female's body. What was that process going through that? Take, take me on a journey with that, <laughs> please, because I'm really, I'm really fascinated by it. So, me knowing all these years I was gay, yeah. um, I discovered the art of drag, and that was performance, mm -hmm. pageantry, and mm -hmm. to me that was exciting. That yeah. gave me that opportunity to live my best life. Excuse me, just to fall in reason, did you perform with uh, Peter Dirk Ace at some point in your life? No, no, I did not. <laughs> okay, sorry. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, so it was that just allowed me to explore and experiment and just be who I want to be. Mm -hmm. And like I said, washing it off made me feel very unattractive. Looking at myself in the mirror without any makeup made me feel unattractive, yeah. you know? So to me, I did my research and I found out that maybe you are transgender, maybe you're trans. And I researched that a bit more and I went to, um, went to clinics and I found out more information and then they assessed me and told me that you are trans. But before them even telling me, I already knew you. that I was trans. Oh my word. So that was your transition phase, actually knowing mm. that you've been all this time. Yeah. So you didn't know, need to do much. So while doing drag all these years, yeah. I didn't know that this is me triggering that and kind of exploring yeah. in the art. Yeah. And tell me that beautiful feeling when you actually became a woman. Tell me, tell me that. When, at what age was that? Was it 18, 19 or? Was it... it was between 17 and 20. Okay. Um, it was an amazing feeling. And honestly, what was even better yeah. is just telling people that, look, I am a woman. Yeah. Ideas changed, everything has changed, yeah. I am a female. Yeah. And that was the most amazing thing ever. So, so, and also, do you think it's easier to come out as a transgender in today's society? Definitely. Why? Um, because of social media yeah. and how society is right now. Yeah. Everything is mainstream. Yeah. Trans, drag, queer culture, yes. everything yes. is mainstream. So it's not that thing where you need to hide. Yeah. You know, a lot of people just don't understand the difference mm. between being a drag, drag queen and a trans woman, mm. but um, it's very easy. And I can tell you, I got it very easy yeah. because well, trans people, before me that had tough times. Yeah. And whenever I do counseling and things and I meet other girls, it's very really sad to kind of listen to their stories because they went through a lot of hard times mm. to be the woman and the men that they are today. Yeah. Where I just went to the clinic, did my thing and... So you counsel as well today, in today's time, with a certain women or women in that case, or, or guys that is in the same phase? Um, I don't do counseling, uh -huh. but I go to counseling because oh, when you're okay. trans, you need to, before you get your meds and everything, mm. they prove everything, you yeah. have to kind of go through counseling. Because yeah. I almost wanted to ask early on, since you grew up in, in Biala, and I know Biala, I know the society there, because mm -hmm. I, was, I was always in the Gama. Okay. Yeah, so I used to visit there for many, 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 many years. Um, still today, but I know also that community and that society is very, they, they got a history of bully. They got mm. a history of violence, history of gangster and drugs and all of that stuff. What was your, 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 your growing up within all of that, those challenges in that community? Like, wasn't it, so that was not part of the bullying stuff. Like you didn't want to be a guy, you wanted to be gay, you want to be a, that, because I'm sure some of that stuff should have come on your road, mm. especially in that society. Was it also part of the, 
the fact that you wanted to be in a woman's body or not, or being gay? Look, you need to know yourself and be comfortable mm. in your skin. Because once people have things, negative things to say mm. to you, it just auto ducks back yeah. and you just move on with your life. Yeah. But there were the slight morphe comments mm. and negative things towards me, but I was 100% comfortable with the person that I was. Yeah. I didn't let anything face me at that time. Yeah. And the reason why I'm asking this is uh, because I think some of the guys or some of the men in still in today's time mm -hmm. can't accept gay people because mm. they always make they always used to be like still bully people when they are different when yep. they want to be gay and all of that stuff so the reason why i'm saying this is i think coming from you and while we're busy on this topic because now we're actually touching on, on gay as well mm -hmm. is that for people to un actually understand what it is that we are saying here is that people need to live their own lives if you feel like you can be a straight guy that's okay but you don't need to judge, bully, or even have to do something if someone else um, wants to be different. Yeah. Because why does it bother your life so much that you need to step in someone else's life to say something about what you say now, the morphe, the girthy? What kind of pleasure does it do to you in your life? But that's because they don't understand. And that's the main issue, is people not understanding. So if you don't understand, you're just going to make fun of it. That's just the easy way yeah. out. But like I said, better educating people, yeah. that's the way to go. So if we can have a short message to educate them right now on the show, to, to set out this message to them, to understand slightly, mm -hmm. maybe not fully right now because the conversation is a bit too short for that. But for those who are listening, especially the real guys, well, I'm sorry, not the real guys, <laughs> but I mean the straight guys, yeah. uh, you know, um, for them to understand what it is to be in another another person's body if you can have like just a, a short message for them look we all have issues and we all have struggles um you might have more issues and struggles than mm. what i have yeah but at the end of the day we all are human and we all um deserve love and respect yeah so i will respect you if you respect me yeah of course of course you know i think for me it's a very it's a it's a big deal in terms because first of all i don't know where my my fascination came came about it's just when i first saw this person and i thought like yeah, a muy <laughs> you know it's like but the first time when i saw a transgender you know and like, where i'm coming from as well you know I, I wasn't exposed to those type of things so i think my fascination came from it's it's nice to see a next person like that but also for me it was an understanding point like what, what, what actually drove you as a person to want to be different like that? Is it attention? Is it the feeling what you explain now in your case, mm. you know, that you always knew, but some of the people maybe they do it for the attention because of the network where they want to be mm. and the entitlement, the power that they have when mm. they are a certain personality. Yeah. So I also want to ask you in this, in this regard to also have a message or something to say about those type of people who does these things actually for the wrong reasons because you get people who want who, who, like a person like you who's actually want to live this life truthfully mm. because this is who you are but now you pretend to be us but you're actually doing us injustice yeah you know so i think you know because i the reason why i'm saying that as well because of the people that i get encountered with because mm. these people you can see man it's an act yeah it's just where they want to be but with your, your, when I saw your face, uh, this now on, on the gram, I could see immediately, but this person actually live the life, mm. you know? And I think a few weeks ago, uh, not a few weeks, a few days ago, um, obviously I've done my research about it. Um, there was a conversation about Sandra, Cassandra, mm -hmm. who was the very first transgender in South Africa. Mm. And she is uh, 75 years old today. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to, I actually did some, some 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 um, question like you know searching around to get her on board with you just to have that today the modern time and yeah. way back and unfortunately I couldn't get her but I mean just to add just just imagine the conversation we could have had with her and you now today to actually tell these people who pretends to be you guys mm. what kind of you know what what kind of injustice that is mm. how, how does it make you feel when you see or hear about people that actually pretend. I said a lot now, but that's actually mm. the question. No, I love it. I love, I love that you said so many things. It's yeah. a lot. Um, it's good things to speak about, actually. Yeah. So coming back to 
men. Yeah. Um, a message I would have to men is you're not the only one yeah. that's curious. There are thousands of men out there that are curious. Yeah. Um, it's okay. Dating a trans woman or being attracted to a trans woman does not mean you are gay. Yeah. You are just attracted, you are attracted to a female figure, so you yes. are not gay at all. Yes, yes. Um, going back to, with me for example, I am a makeup artist and a hairstylist, yeah. so you're always yeah, going to see me yeah. dolled up. So I'm not doing this for attention, yeah. it's my job, yeah. you know, so I'm a walking billboard for myself. Yes. But there are a lot of trans women that I know that do it for the attention, mm -hmm. that do it for the fact that they know there are a lot of curious guys out there that want to explore. Yeah. And that's your gig, That's the, I'm okay with that. I yeah. respect you, you do you. Yeah. But um, where I have to disagree, where you speak about, spoke about Cassandra, yeah. she fought for our rights today. Oh. So why are we going to be disrespectful by not respecting ourselves yeah. and other trans women because when you do wrong mm. as a trans woman it reflects on all of us mm. because then people are going to assume that all of us are like that yeah. you know and yeah. that's that's not good mm -hmm. um i believe that we should all respect ourselves because it's already the stereotype of what trans women are we are sex workers mm. we love to be naked we yeah. love to be flamboyant some of us just love wearing makeup and yeah. having our hair done yeah. and looking good. That yeah. doesn't mean we're doing this for the attention. Mm. But I think if I should just come in there, um, that comes from another culture that mm. uh, being uh, you know used as a sex slave. Mm. Uh, and I, and I, no no disrespect to them, and I, I think I, I shouldn't mention it, but. That comes from a different culture because they use that actually to make extra money for the household, for the cause of the circumstances. I know that, mm. and that's in, a, in, in another specific country. So, so that is also part of that kind of journey. But that's why I can say, for you guys, it actually one the truth because this is who you are. Mm. This is like how I am because I know who I am. Like this is how you know you are. Mm. And I just feel like it's a disrespect to you guys when people pretend and use your identity, your guys' identity to actually want to make a living. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. But I also understand that today is time. But that's why I wanted to just, for you to have a say on, on, on that, mm. you know? You know, I always, I'm always gonna fight for trans rights. Yeah. Um, what's really sad is that whatever I'm doing right now, it's not for me. Yeah. It's for those trans women to come after me. And it's up to us to kind of promote and fight for our rights so mm. that they can live a better life, an even better life than what we are living today. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, you know, for me, and I'm going to say this, I, I, I traveled uh, for three years ago to a specific country and uh, I saw the, the, um, uh, what do you call it again, where um, these women on the street actually do these kind of things where I felt disgust because that's a disrespect first of all to our women and a disrespect to um, the transgender culture and because I think, you know, she used that title to actually as a showcase but on the street not in a not in a, in a in a capacity where she can respect herself in mm -hmm. that sense you know what i mean Be but because the country is so free they can do it that those type of things anywhere at any place and they know they won't they will they won't be you know getting trouble with the law or anything like that and uh for me at that time when i saw it at the same time when i felt disgust but i also saw the, the positive the positive in it you know because I know everybody wants to make a living. Everybody mm. wants to go um, the extra mile to actually get a few uh, bucks in their pocket. But I think the obsession for me, or not the obsession, the fascination comes from when I first saw it and then I see it develop. Every time when I see this, I was like, no man, I need to find out. I need to sit out and actually please myself mm -hmm. to just have a conversation with, with, uh, with a transgender. Because I need to, I understand already, and I, and I accept all kind of people, but I just felt like if there's of all people that I need to have a conversation with, uh, besides be, uh, the gay people, because I have gay people in my family, um, a transgender is because that's a whole transformation of a body. You know, you're talking about hair, we're talking about, if I should mention it, boobs, you know, all private parts and all of that. 
So that for me is fascinating because I know I'm a guy and what I have and how I feel, <laughs> you know, that um, what is what you call it, that manly thing that we have, the masculinity of a man, you know, it's different. How, how do you actually cope with that body transition into a female? Does everything change? Do you go to different bathrooms now? Do you actually, how do you think? Do you still get thoughts of a guy? You know, do you still think of a, of a woman like, hey, you know what I mean? Mm. Um, or is it straight on just woman? You know, was it everything processed <laughs> inside of your woman? Mm. Everything is female. Yeah. It's always been whatever's inside of yeah. it, always been female. Yeah. Like, I've, it's like I've been trapped in the wrong body. Mm. Um, when I started taking hormones, like that was like, uh, eye opening it was the most amazing thing because now my outer is finally matching my inner yes. and to me that was amazing like yeah. I remember when I went for my dress augmentation mm -hmm. like to me that was like the cherry on top because that was like okay now I can actually now I feel, feel. like a woman yeah. you know yeah um I've always used the female bathroom, even when I was just like a gay guy. Really? Because I was just like, I'm not going to go. Oh, yeah, because they also accept that the That was gays. just a lot of conflict. If I had yeah. to go into a male bathroom and then people are going to be like, um, what my change is so morphy. So I didn't have time for that. So uh, I'd rather uh, than just deal with moody women yeah. in a bathroom than <laughs> deal with um, men in a bathroom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was always female. Yeah, so make sure if we should talk about, because now that we know who you are and I accept you for who you are. I've been accepting you know, trans in the community. Uh, I never had a problem with it. Now let's just talk about your success as being a woman. Mm. You know, tell us what it is your um, your journey. You know, when you started, because I know you were a professional makeup artist mm. with that. Uh, I didn't know that you're doing hair as well. Mm. Um, mm. Is that what you do as a profession? Yes. You know, it is. the full on. What do they call it? Um, uh, is it makeup? It's just makeup artist, right? <laughs> so I'm a media hair and makeup artist. Oh, so specifically okay. in media, runway. Oh. So yeah, so that's where I'm. Yeah, and it, in. this is now mainstream only? Or? I'm very open minded, and uh. especially being in the dominant colored community, mm. you have to be very versatile yeah. in your work. Like you need to be able to do someone's hair in their kitchen and yeah. work on a <laughs> big stage and do someone's hair. Yeah. Um, it just shows that you're very open minded as an um, artists, but also you're giving back to the community as well. Yeah, yeah. So you, that's mainly what you, what, what keeps you busy nowadays. Yeah. In terms of in, in community. Mm -hmm. And what is, what was your biggest job that you had as a makeup artist? Working for SMN's Fashion Week. Mm. And what was that like? It was amazing. Um, the rush, I can't explain the rush of working backstage at the fashion show. Mm. Like it's not thinking and just doing. Yeah. Like to me, that was really amazing. Yeah. And anything else? Movies, TV shows, um, um, theater shows, um, or was it just mainly? Um, it was mainly runway. Okay. Mainly runway. And what me. is your concentration on? What is it that you would like to settle in? Because you're still young, it's 25. Mm. I would really love to have my own studio one day. Makeup? Yeah, with hair and makeup. Like that's my main goal. Yeah. Is having my own studio. Okay. And venturing from there. Yeah. Well, um, we will definitely have you, all your information up on our show, but just mm -hmm. for to end this off, um, can I give us a motivational word, especially to our men out there, especially to um, the next transgenders that's coming up, you know, who shouldn't be scared of the, uh, you know, to be who they are, to the parents out there, you know, I think because those are the most important people that that actually need the motivation from someone like you who's living it, mm. who, it's your life, it, you breathe, mm. there's, there's nothing else, nothing, you know what I mean? Mm. Just a strong message to, to those three individuals, man, if you, if you don't mind. No, I feel like no. they need to hear it from you and not you, because <laughs> today I'm not going to give a message. <laughs> <laughs> so three messages, um, I'm going to start with men. Yeah. Don't be afraid to explore. Mm. Don't think that whoever you might be interested in is going to decrease your masculinity or your manhood. Yeah. It's okay to step out of the comfort zone, yeah. out of your comfort zone. Um, be okay with people's choices in life mm. and just love your life. Yeah. Um, to parents, um, if your child is different, it's okay. All you're doing is just trying to protect them and that is okay. Mm. But 
try and better educate yourself on whatever you see your child is involved in and help your child through it yeah. because that's just going to make your child an even better person mm -hmm. because you might educate them on something that they don't know anything about yeah. you know to other trans women um, things might not be okay now things might not be okay tomorrow next week or next year but one day things are going to be okay yeah. and you're going to live your best life yes. Well, That's there it. you have it. There you have it. I don't know. I, I don't have anything else to say. I'm just very, very pleased today that I had my, my chance to sit down with Maxine. I'm not going to mention Transgender anymore because he is a real person. She is a person. She is a lady. So I'm very honored to actually once again thank you very much for your time uh -huh. that you actually reply, that you come out and actually want to sit down and have this conversation with me. I really appreciate it. That's only And pleasure. I wish you nothing but luck in your career in makeup and I hope that you're going to get it as soon as possible oh. your own studio and if there's anything anything that we can help I, I can help with mm -hmm. you we are in contact now so don't be scared um, I'll put out the finger oh, thank, thank you, you so much. so much thank you there you have it guys <laughs> I'll see you later salutas